So what are you confident about? Are you beautiful? Are you super smart? Are you a hard worker? Are you athletic? Are you talented and musical? What do you think about yourself and say, I got that? All right, think about what it is, what you got, what you got. Now, believe it or not, your ability or what you have, any of those things, whatever it is you're thinking of, doesn't actually give you confidence. Um, people of the world seem to have confidence because they have those things, but scripture tells us that real confidence comes from who we fear. I know we've been talking about fear a lot in the last six days and that fear of man, fear of man, but there's a good kind of fear we should have. And, and Proverbs says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. It's actually also the beginning of all confidence. Proverbs teaches us that confidence doesn't come from competency. It doesn't come from being great at something or beautiful or whatever it may be. It actually comes from fearing the right person. Not man, not self, but God. People without the fear of the Lord think that their confidence comes from self. So they're like, well, well, what if I get in a car accident and I'm not beautiful anymore? What do I have? Or what if I lose my voice and I can't sing? Or what if I'm not popular tomorrow? What if I lose my amazing job? And then all of a sudden their confidence would be gone, poof, into thin air because they don't have that anchor for it anymore. Well, the anchor for your confidence is never supposed to be yourself or your abilities. It's supposed to be the fear of God and that he works in you and he, what he gives to you. Check this out from Oswald Chambers. The remarkable thing about fearing God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear God, you fear everything else. Believers have a refuge in that if we lose everything, if you lose that one thing you had in your mind that gives you confidence, you still have purpose. You still have worth. You still have real confidence in your life and in eternity because God is the one that gives you those things, not yourself. You lose yourself, you still have God. You lose God, you have nothing even if you have yourself. Reflect. So what is that one thing you have in your mind? What is that one thing that you got it? You got that confidence. You know that it's beauty, it's fame, it's importance, it's work, whatever, fill in the blank. It's an amazing husband, amazing kids. What is that thing for you? Now ask yourself why, or if you do, hold that as a more secure place for your heart and your life than in God. Is that your refuge or is God your refuge? So the scripture says that our children will have a refuge. What does that mean? It means the people whom we influence whenever we show a God-fearing confidence will learn that from us and they can have a God-fearing confidence. So think about your life. Who are you influencing? Is it your kids? Is it the internet? Is it your friends at school? Whoever it may be, are you putting off a godly confidence or a self-confidence? Are you teaching those people to have a refuge in God or a refuge in self? So the next time you want to boast in self or think about what your confidence is in, stop yourself dead in the tracks and say, no, I'm gonna think about who God is and I'm gonna glorify his character because anything good of me only comes because of him, because he's created this in me, because he's made me worthy, because he's made me righteous. And think about his goodness and glorify him instead of glorifying yourself. So next time you wanna think over here, just shift your mind over here. Don't think about you, think about who God is and let your heart rest in that.